Hello friends, welcome to today's video. I'm Jeanette with Vivo Vintage Designs. In today's tutorial, I am going to be using um, liquid acrylic. This is by Dr. P.H. Martins. I have the color Alcohol Ink Watermelon by Ranger, and I have Pitch Black. I also have a little palette here. I have a little bowl with some water. I have some 99% alcohol, a piece of photo paper, and I have some Posca pens. I also have a dotting tool and some snow cap. And we're going to create a flower with veins. I'll be using my airbrush and the compressor is set at 40 PSI. So let's get started. First thing I am going to do is I am going to put down the color watermelon. And I chose this color because it's uh, not as bright as some of the other, I shouldn't say bright. It's not as pigmented as some of the other reds that I have. So I'm gonna try this. And what the um, acrylic is going to do, it's, it's going to create veining in the petals of the flowers. And you'll see what I mean in just a moment. So I've got my red down and I'm going to put down some alcohol. Let it soften that red a little bit and then I'm going to create some petals. And it doesn't really matter how perfect or imperfect these come out because, well, you'll see in a little bit why. But you want to make sure that everything is completely dry. So go back and forth. Don't even worry about your edges, what they look like. I might want to soften this one a little bit. I have to say that looks pretty on its own. This is a really nice color and I don't use it that often. Okay, so now I'm going to take pitch black and I'm going to use a dirty micro brush to move the pitch black around. I'm going to put that in the center like that. Just a drop. I'm gonna let it spread and do its thing and then I'm gonna help it along a little bit. Once you get it to the size you want, be sure to dry it. And then we're going to repeat the same process with the black that we did with the red. But you're only going to go close to the edge of the black. You don't want it to go too far. And then blow it out. You really want the dark to be close to the center. That one didn't work out so well, so I may try that one again. Yeah, I just want to create that little shadow around the center that you see there. 
I'm not trying to blow it too much into the petals. If you have any spots that you want to darken, just add a little bit more in that area and blow out a little bit more. All right, so I'm making sure that everything is nice and dry. And now what I'm going to do is the acrylic ink that I have is called Ruby Red. And I am going to take my little palette here and I'm going to put a little bit, and all you need is very little, just a couple of drops. And I'm going to use a dotting tool to apply it. So I'm going to take the dotting tool and I'm going to put it close to the black, like that. Then I'm going to take a little drop of water and I'm going to place it right on top of that red. Then I'm going to use the airbrush to move that. And I find that if I just go up and down the same way that I blow the petals, I get that to move better. And the reason I add water is because if I just use the acrylic ink on its own, it's very opaque and I don't want it to be that dark. I want it to um, kind of dilute it a little bit. So the water does that. And I'm going to continue to go around the center, oops, adding a little drop of water. And blowing that acrylic ink all around like that. And you can see it creates these spidery veins that are really interesting and pretty. Now, of course, if you want your veins to be brighter and deeper in color, don't add the water. And if you have an area that you think may need a little bit more of that veining, just go over it again. See, I think I need some over here, so I'm going to add a little bit more in this area here and see if I can get them to move up that far. Okay, that works. It doesn't matter the direction they go in. So don't worry if they're not going exactly um, in the direction of the petal. That's, that's okay. And the more sporadic you are with the airbrush, the more directions that those little lines go. They kind of branch out all over the place, which is a really nice effect.
getting close to finished here. stuck the dotting tool in the water. <laughs> I think I need one more right here and then I'll be finished. And then comes the fun part for me. Okay, so that's pretty neat. I could add more, but I'm going to leave it alone for the sake of time. Now I'm going to take my blow dryer and make sure it's completely dry. And then I'm going to use a let me see if this one works. I have so many of these and half of them don't even work anymore. Let's see if I can find one that works. Ah, I guess that one works. All right, so now that I have my flower, I am going to pick out petals and I'm going to outline them. And I wanna make these pretty big, these petals. I don't want them to be small. and the ink will give you the petals. If you look closely, you'll find what looks like petals and you can just outline that. Nothing has to be perfect. You can just have some fun with this. Jeez, nothing comes out until I push the tip and then it all pours out. Something must be wrong with this tip. You can take these tips out and run them under water if they should get clogged. Just pull them out with a tweezer or something. And if you don't see a petal, just make up your own. All right, this pen is gonna drive me crazy. Let's try this one. Here we go. I would like the lines to be a little bit thinner, but I'm going to work with what I've got. <laughs> okay. Those are going to be my petals, and I think I will put that one there. Okay, now I have to make sure that all the lines are the same width. So I'm just going to go over the lines that I did with the smaller marker. And then there's some areas that I want to appear as though it's the background, the petals don't touch in that area, so I'm going to fill it in in black and then I'm going to use the pen to fill in the areas where I don't have any petals. I want that to be the background. And I actually have larger nibs, which would make this process a lot faster. Now, if you don't have Posca pens, you can use acrylic paint. You can use a Sharpie marker, whatever you have. I don't recommend that you use ink, the alcohol inks, to fill in these areas because it comes out very spotty and streaky and will only frustrate you.
So I'm doing this in real time because I want you to see just how quickly you can create this flower. I usually speed up my videos, but because this is just so quick and easy, I figured I would do it in real time so that you can see it won't take you very long to create this gorgeous flower. And I think I want to close this off over here. So it looks a little bit more dramatic. How pretty is that? Now I'm going to take my little cap here, shake up my snow cap. I'm going to grab a clean micro brush. I don't think I may, I may not have mentioned that earlier. And you see there's some areas here where to make it even more dramatic you can like make it as though there's a space in between the petals just by putting like a little triangular shape in there I always like the way that looks okay back to the center Right, I'm going to put a little bit of the snow cap in my little shot glass here, just a couple of drops. I need to clean this. I make such a mess with this. Are you okay, Diesel? <laughs> There's ink all over the cap and it makes it really hard to close and it makes it so that it spills all over the place. So bear with me while I clean this a minute. All right, Got a lot of it on my hand. All right, so now we're going to create our center. I don't like this petal here. I think I'm going to, <laughs> I think I'm going to reshape this one. And that's what's great about this is that if you don't like the way your petals turned out, change them. Okay. And now I'm just going to create a simple center. So I'm going to start dotting at the top. And I always go back when I reload my brush and I start at the top. This is the area where I want the sun to be coming from. So it's going to be the lightest. So as my micro brush needs to be reloaded, that's when I start making the dots towards the bottom, which I want in shade because there's less ink on the brush and the dots will get smaller. Now you could dry in between these layers if you have, um, if my center were smaller, I would be drawing in between, but it's really, it's kind of big, so it's not necessary. Or not as necessary, I should say. So I see a lot of people creating their centers, but they're not layering. They're just doing one flat layer of these dots. And when you do that, it doesn't give the center any dimension. It's if you want it to look dimensional, like it's standing out from your painting, you need to do it in layers and you need to decide where you want your light to be coming from and what part of the flower you want shaded. Otherwise, it just looks like flat, you know, flat white center. And you can see as I go down, I'm making them further apart, not nearly as close as the top and I'm not making it as heavy with the dots 
as I am towards the top because this is my shaded area down here. And then I'm going to go back to the top and add some more to brighten that area up. I'll always bring some down. And I like to do some outside of the center itself, just because it makes it a little bit softer. But that's my preference. And there you go. How pretty is that? And so easy. Took me longer to do the center than the flower just about. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you give this a try. It's really simple. Make sure to check out the description box for links to the products used in this video. And uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your interaction with my channel is um, very helpful and also a very nice way to show your support. And it lets YouTube know that you enjoy my content and makes my videos available to more people. So thank you again for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. I will see you in the next one. Bye.